Should I get an e-bike with a cadence sensor or a torque sensor? That's a question we get from a lot of people who are new to electric bikes, and if you're not sure which one's right for you, this episode of our Beginner's Guide to E-Bikes will tell you everything you need to know about how these sensors work, but more importantly, how they impact the way you ride. We'll even talk about how torque sensors relate to mid-drive e-bikes and sensor swap technology that some brands offer, which means you don't have to choose, you can get the best of both worlds. Before we dive in, I wanna thank Electric E-Bikes for sponsoring this video. We'll talk about them more in a little bit. And if we help you find your next electric bike and you want to support the channel, we do have affiliate links and using those before you make your purchase is a free way to help us make more content like this. You can scan the QR code on your screen if you plan on buying from electric, or you can find a list of all the favorite brands we like to recommend down below in the description. And you can also use the links to find any current pricing or sales that might be going on. And if you're just here for information, that's awesome. We wanna set you up with everything you need to know to find an amazing electric bike. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay up to date on this series. We have a lot more helpful episodes on the way. With that, I'm Miles with eBike Escape. Let's talk cadence and torque sensors. Before we get into the nitty gritties, I wanna lay a foundation for what these sensors actually do. A cadence sensor detects when you pedal and a torque sensor detects how hard you pedal or how much force you push into the pedals. When I started looking for my first electric bike, I was told that torque sensors are way better than cadence sensors. Now having experienced both, the reality is they just offer a totally different riding experience. So the best sensor comes down to personal preference and what you expect out of your electric bike. Do you want an electric bike that zips you up to speed with a little bit of effort? Or do you want something that feels more like a regular ride but with a boost. So let's start things off with cadence sensors and I mentioned that they detect when you pedal. So when the sensor detects pedaling it turns the motor on and when you stop pedaling it turns the motor off. Very much like an on off switch. Here's the big thing with cadence sensors and this on off functionality. Your e-bike doesn't actually know how hard you're pedaling. You can pedal hard, soft, fast, or slow and you're going to get the same exact support from the motor. So if your legs aren't controlling the power that means something else is and this is where pedal assist comes into play and you usually have around five levels of assist to work with sometimes less sometimes more but we'll just stick with five for the purposes of this video and this does bring us to a little bit of a fork in the road because there are two main ways pedal assist can be programmed to give you motor support there's speed based pedal assist and current based pedal assist speed based will set a speed limit for each level of assist so level one might get nine miles per hour level two might bump up to 15 miles per hour and so on till you hit the max assist level and max speed of the bike strictly speed based pedal assist doesn't actually change the level of power you're getting from the motor so this can make it feel like you're rocketing up to those speed limits of each assist level and this can be thrilling for some but it can also catch you off guard if you've never been on an electric bike before the other thing to be aware of is once you hit those speed limits the motor actually turns off and then once you fall below it it will kick back in as long as you're spinning your legs and this can be great if you're on a trail with a speed limit and you want to make sure you're not going above it or if you're riding in a group of people that are riding traditional bikes and you want to keep pace with them you can easily do that because it kind of feels like cruise control as long as you're spinning your legs you're going to maintain the speed of whatever assist level that you're in however if you're accelerating up to that speed limit and you hit it it can feel like you're hitting a little bit of a wall because e-bikes are heavy and difficult to pedal without motor support so this can make the pedaling experience feel a little less intuitive then you have current based systems and this is where a specific power level is set to each level of assist so level one might give you four amps or around 15% of the motor power level two might boost things up to 10 amps or 40% of the motor power and so on until you hit the max power of the motor and the max assist level so if you are new to e-bikes and you were concerned when I was describing the speed based system what's nice about current based is it lets you ramp up power in a much more gradual and predictable way and current based 
case doesn't use speed to control the motor. So this can give you a much more smooth experience because you're not gonna be hitting those walls I described earlier until you hit the max speed of the e-bike, which is usually around 20 or 28 miles per hour. So current base lets you dial in a specific amount of power. Some brands actually use a mix of both like Electric's XP 3.0, for instance, uses speed base and current base for levels one and two, setting level one to nine miles per hour and giving that four amps of power. Level two is set to 10 amps of power and 15 miles per hour max. And then once you get into levels three through five, it ditches the speed base altogether and just sticks to a strictly current base system, which gives you access to the max speed of the e-bike just with different levels of support. The XP 3.0 does have an advanced setting that lets you bypass the speed based altogether if you want a strictly current based experience. Now that we have a general idea about how Cadence sensors impact the riding experience, let's take a second to talk about how they actually work. There are different styles of Cadence sensors, but for the most part, you're gonna see e-bikes that use magnets with their Cadence sensors. Sometimes this can be a single magnet attached to the pedal arm, but in most cases, it's a ring of magnets attached around the chain ring of the bike. And when you pedal, this will spin past the sensor and that's what tells the motor to turn on and off. Older e-bikes or cheaper e-bikes use exposed magnets and a sensor that mounts separately somewhere on the frame, but you don't see this as much these days because those exposed components are more prone to breaking. Now it's a lot more common to have the magnets and the sensors in a self-contained unit, usually attached around the crank of the e-bike. And the more magnets that the sensor uses, the more responsive the motor is going to be because you don't have to pedal as far before one of those magnets pass the sensor. Let's get into the torque sensor experience. So I mentioned that torque sensors measure how much force you're putting into the pedals. And this means that your legs play a much bigger role in how much power you actually get from the motor. So if you're not pedaling very hard, the motor's not gonna work as hard, but once you really start digging in, the motor is going to match your effort. And this is what makes torque sensors feel so smooth and intuitive. So if you like the feeling of riding a traditional bike, but you want want a little extra assistance or a boost, a torque sensor is a great option. Most torque sensors use strain gauges that bend when you pedal. Just think about bending a ruler. The sensor is going to measure how much strain there is, and if it detects a lot, it's going to say, hey, you're using a lot of effort, we should kick in more motor support. Torque sensors are usually integrated into the bottom bracket area of the bike, and they are more complex and expensive to manufacture than cadence sensors. Not that long ago, you'd only see torque sensors on higher priced options, but now there are a ton of options under $2,000 and Electric actually has their Express models that offer this experience at just $1,000, which would have been unheard of a few years ago. Now that we covered how torque sensors tell the motor to match your effort, let's talk about why they work so well with mid-drive motors. Most e-bikes you're gonna see under the $2,000 price point are going to have rear hub motors, and these motors actually sit in the back wheel. You're also gonna see these on some above that $2,000 price point, but once you start getting into more premium options meant for performance or off-roading or serious commuting, you're gonna start seeing mid-drive options and mid-drive motors actually sit on the bottom bracket of the bike right where you pedal. And this is what makes them such a great pairing with torque sensors because everything that makes the bike go is centralized right where you pedal. And unlike hub motors where it's going to power the wheel to go, the mid-drive motor is actually going to power the chain just like you do when you push into the pedals. And so this centralizes everything, the torque sensor, your pedal effort, and the mid-drive motor are all working in synchronicity, and it makes you feel at one with the e-bike. Another perk to a mid-drive motor is it uses your gears. So if you're going up a tough hill, you can drop into an easier gear, and the motor is gonna work harder so you don't have to. Or if you're on flat ground, you can shift up to a higher gear, and it's gonna help you go faster. And this is something that hub drive motors can't do quite as well. 
And because the torque sensor, your feet, and the motor are all working with your chain and your gears, this makes it a more efficient experience. And this is gonna use power smarter than a hub motor. And it's going to let you go farther on a single battery charge. The mid-drive route might cost a little bit more, but that responsive, smooth power and the more efficient performance is why people love mid-drive e-bikes. And if you've never been on a mid-drive e-bike before and you have the opportunity to test ride one, I'd highly recommend it. You can still get a great performance out of a hub drive motor for less money, but riding on a mid-drive motor can set a benchmark for what the performance of an e-bike can be. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Let's break down the pros and cons to cadence sensors and torque sensors, starting with the pros for each. One of the biggest advantages to a cadence sensor is it takes minimal effort to get moving. My first electric bike had a cadence sensor on it and it made ditching my car so easy because I knew I could get to where I wanted to go fast and without breaking much of a sweat. And I'd commute to work and I didn't have to worry about being the smelly coworker. Many riders prefer the cadence sensor experience because it does provide that thrilling boost, almost like the bike is pushing you forward rather than just assisting with your pedaling. This can make the ride feel exciting and effortless, especially on flat terrain. And because cadence sensors provide consistent and immediate support, it can make climbing hills easier than some torque sensor setups we've tested because you're getting that full motor support behind your pedaling. And cadence sensors can make it easy to maintain specific speeds, which comes in handy if you're on a trail with a speed limit or trying to keep pace with other bikers that aren't on electric bikes. And their simple components are cheaper and easier to replace when compared to torque sensors. Now for some advantages to torque sensors. Torque sensors offer that natural pedaling feel because the motor works in parallel with the amount of effort you're pushing into the pedals. They are a lot more battery efficient because they only give you as much motor power as you need as compared to cadence sensors which gives you consistent motor support. If you enjoy a traditional biking experience or you like to get a little bit more exercise, torque sensors are great because it requires genuine pedal effort to engage the motor. A torque sensor can make it feel like you're riding a regular bike but with bionic legs, especially when you pair it with a mid-drive motor. Here are some of the considerations for both, starting with cadence sensors. Depending on how the motor is programmed, it can give you a jolt of power or acceleration that can feel a little rowdy, especially if you're not familiar with riding electric bikes. They are also less battery efficient because they do provide that consistent motor support as compared to the variable response you get from a torque sensor. And cadence sensors can also lead to something called ghost pedaling. This is when the motor goes faster than you can keep up with your pedaling. So it can feel like you're just spinning your legs, you're not actually connected to the gears at all, and you're just going through the motions and the bike is doing all the work for you. On all the bikes we review, we always check that the gearing is able to keep up with the motor speed. And here are some considerations for torque sensors. Not that I've ever had to do this, but if anything does go wrong with a torque sensor, because of their complex nature and that they're more integrated with the bike, replacing them can cost more money when compared to the simplicity of a cadence sensor. Getting up to speed or climbing steep hills can be more of a challenge than a cadence sensor because the rider effort and motor effort are directly tied to each other. But if your e-bike has a throttle, that kind of mitigates some of this worry. Some brands like Electric have programmed their torque sensors to give you more power to make it easier to hit higher speeds or climb hills than other torque sensors we've tested. And from reviews that I've read, most people have responded positively to this, even cadence sensor enthusiasts. So you can see that both sensors have trade-offs, but companies are always trying to advance technology to bridge the gap. And one cool trend that we've noticed is some brands offer sensor swap. And this means they put a cadence sensor and a torque sensor in the same bike and give you the option to switch between them. What's great about this is it gives you the versatility to drastically change how you ride your e-bike. So if you want an easy ride or you want that workout 
or that integrated, more natural feel, you can switch between the cadence sensor and torque sensor. And what's also nice is if you share your e-bike with a family member that has a different riding preference or riding ability, you can cater the e-bike to match their needs. We're aware of some models that offer this. We recently received an over-the-air update on our Velatric Discover 2. So now that has sensor swapping and Ufree offers this on both of their models, the City Robin X Plus and the Stellar Falcon. And if you're aware of any models that offer this, drop a comment down below and we'll keep a running list. So you can see that choosing between a cadence sensor and a torque sensor really does come down to personal preference. Tell us your preference down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on this series. We have a lot more helpful episodes on the way. And if you're buying an electric bike and you want to support the channel, remember using our affiliate links before you go to make your purchase is free to you and it really helps us out. So you can scan the QR code on your screen if you're buying from electric or look down below in the description for the list of all the brands we like to recommend. Thank you so much for watching and can't wait to see you in the next one.